What's going on everybody? It's 123 Stealth Bomber here bringing you a tutorial on the gem editor. And before I go any further, this is Men of War Assault Squad 2, the beta, of course. Um, not Men of War Assault Squad 1. I since the beta came out about two days ago. Uh, if you wonder how I got it, you have to pre-purchase Men of War Assault Squad 2 and you will you'll get granted access to uh, the open beta. Uh, so for now on, I'll be using Men of War Assault Squad 2 since the game is brand new uh, and more people will be looking at stuff like this than Men of War Assault Squad. Uh, and I think, you know, um, as I can tell, the editor is very, very, very similar to the other one. So if you guys are still using Men of War Assault Squad or even the other Men of Wars like Vietnam, uh, Red Tide, Condemned Heroes, or whatever the case may be, the editor is still the same. Yes, nothing has changed. Obviously, the HUD has changed, but I'm talking about the actual editor itself. As you can tell, it still looks very the same as um, Men of War Soul Squad and all the other ones. So, for this purpose, to update, I will be using Men of War Soul Squad 2. Um, but just so you guys know, there is nothing that changed, so... Anything I do on these tutorials will be the same for the other ones as well. Um, so people wanted to quickly ask me what do I think about Menor War Assault Squad 2. Uh, so what do I think? Well, I think it's really good so far. Obviously, since it's the beta, I can't really complain too much. Um, you know, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. The multiplayer, I've tried the multiplayer, it's definitely approved, I definitely like that. The maps are very well designed, uh, the models are definitely improved, like the Hummel here, it looked crap in Men of War Assault Squad, now it looks a lot better in Men of War Assault Squad 2. Um, so yeah, they ha a lot of things been changed up, but, um, you know, a lot of work still needs to be done. So... Anyways, I gotta get off that topic because I'll be talking for hours on that. Let's get to the main topic of this video, which is how to use the actor to cover command. Um, so actor to cover is very, very simple to use. Um, it's, yeah, as you could tell, the video is not extremely long. So it's very easy to use and it's very important or it can become important for when you're scripting your own missions. Um, so in our case of our video, I'm going to show you two examples, one just using one soldier and another example using multiple soldiers. So our first example, we'll use place one soldier and we're going to first start off by giving him a tag. So if you press W then six, uh, it'll bring up your tags of selection and we're just going to give him one simple tag. So USA should be good enough. Uh, now what we're going to do is go to our covers tab now our covers tab is right on the side these little icons right here where my mouse is um, it should be the little figure uh, under like a, I guess like a house I guess it, that's what it's supposed to represent or something like that I'm not exactly sure but anyways if you click on this all these little green icons will be around walls buildings even tanks and vehicles uh, these indicate all the possible covers available throughout everything in the map um, and yeah, if I select one, for example, it'll say squat lie. So that's what the soldier does. He squats behind this piece of cover while aiming over it. Or for example, this one, uh, he snipe cover. So I guess he's just standing right over it. So for example, we're going to use these walls for our example. So what we're going to do is select one piece of cover. And if when you select it, it'll have a purple ring to indicate it's selected uh, under the type you're going to have a name. Now the name is very simple, is very similar to the tag. Um, I don't know why they just couldn't call it tag because that's what it really is, but they called it a name. And it works the same way as tag, just give it a name, simple. So let's just call this one cover one. If you select, if you click off of it, it'll turn the piece of cover to red. So if you're looking around the map, you can easily be indicated since it's a red, not green. Um, it's also indicated by like a green line protruding out of it. Plus, it has the the name that we gave that piece of cover. Um, it's kind of, it works very similar to tags when you have the tags open. Um, when you you know giving tags to units and whatnot. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our triggers. 
and we're just gonna do one simple trigger so go to our we can skip over conditions and go straight over to commands and it's, I already have it at the top here but it's under actor and it'll be actor to cover okay so the selector uh, as you might know from now, uh, we expand this box and we always do the selector first. Uh, give it the tag of the unit that we're using. And you can skip right over drop. We don't need that. Now the covers, you'll s drop down this box. And you'll notice here's the cover name that we named it. Now if I just select it, nothing happens. As you can see, it's still blank. That's because... It, you have to select this box. If you click on the box, it'll turn white, and there you go, there's the name. This, the reason is because you can select as many covers as you want. The more names you give, the more, the bigger the drop down box will be. So, as of right now, we only have one, so that wouldn't really matter. But when you have multiple of them, it's going to matter um, in that case because you can turn them on and off. Now the mode is the type on how well the soldier will utilize the cover or what kind of cover they'll pick. Um, the best, I'm just guessing, well, it's the best cover available at the time. Um, random, well, it won't apply to us for this point in time, but random is they'll just pick us literally a piece of random cover that has that's under this cover's name. And density, I'm guessing, if we select it, it had there's a density number, and I'm guessing the heavier the number, I don't know, I never actually knew, and I don't know, on that one. So you would have to test on this one, you have to, like, experiment with that one. But I'm guessing it's just, you know, heavier numbers mean heavier, like, they'll more likely go to that cover rather than that one, since it's a heavier density, I'm guessing you want to put it that way so for now we're just going to do best because there's only one cover so none of them really will work anyways so uh yeah we're all set for this so we can test this now okay so as you see automatically the soldier walks turns around walks to that piece of cover and um gets behind the cover without me even doing this and just to show you it's the correct piece of cover i'm going to go to the covers tab and he's directly right on top of it as you can see now this is like how they do the animations for this stuff and he's right on top of it very very simple um some ways you can utilize using this I wouldn't really recommend using this for your own men, like if it's under your control, usually you would use this for stuff like controlling the AI. If you wanted the AI, instead of placing them there automatically and putting them on a hold move uh, movement, you can say like, oh, you know, they're over here, they detect some soldiers or whatever, and then let's say they get behind this wall. Instead of them chasing down the enemy and getting into the field when they're open and fire, let's say they get into this piece of cover only. That's one way to use it. Uh, utilizing this very effectively. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use multiple soldiers. It works the same way, um, it's just that we're adding in more, that's all. So we're going to use 10 soldiers here. So the first thing we're going to do is select them all and give them tags. I'm going to use the same tag so they all have the same tag to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to, once you do that, I'm going to head over to the covers tag once again. And this time, we're going to make a lot of pieces of cover. So, let's select all of these right here. And let's say we'll give these cover 2. Okay. Um, and we'll select all these and call this cover 1. Okay. So, um, really quickly, um, if you're wondering what this one is, this box right here, this entire thing, this is your filters menu. This indicates all of your named covers. So if I click on one, it's going to bring you to the exact location of where it is, and it's going to have it selected for you. Uh, this is very, very helpful if, in, just in case if you have plenty of this stuff going on and you can't find it, you could just say, okay, I'll click on this. Oh, okay, that's where it is. Um, and that's what it would just be used for. And, and for this case, obviously, they have all the same names, so it would kind of make it a little confusing anyways. But if you made multiple covers different names, I think it would be a lot easier to find out your pieces of cover. Okay, so uh, we'll use those two for now. So what we're going to do now is going to go to our triggers. 
Go back to our actor to cover command, and this time we're going to add in our new cover name. Since we have cover one and cover two, we need to add in cover two. Um, so we're going to click on this. As you can see, both of them are now in this bar. Now for the mode, I'm going to click random. I want this to be completely random so the soldiers pick their own pieces of cover. And yeah, we should be all set so we can test this out now. Okay, so as you can see, it's definitely they spread out. It's de that's definitely completely random. I could like that's if that was ever random, that's com that's definitely a perfect example of random. So, um, especially when you have more pieces of cover, it's even more random. So this is a perfect representation on how actor actor to cover works very well. So again, like I said, if you wanted to have the AI um, get like behind some defensive positions, this is like the best way to do it. It's the easiest way to do it and it's um, I think it, this is the only way to do it. Uh, instead of just like having there automatically you can just do this like that. Um, again not really recommended for using your own soldiers. Yes, now let's say if I do select them and I move them around I want you to note that they do not go back to that piece of cover. It's not like they're Got stuck it, there. They'll automatically keep going back to it. I can even make them move, shoot. They'll do fine. Yes sir. Um, also, you'll also notice uh, one other thing. Even it, though sir. the soldiers are on a movement mode, like say if I put them on hold, now let's say if there's enemy movement around, yes, like say there's enemy over here, even if their movement is on move, they will not move from this position. Okay? So just so you're aware of this, uh, they will not move from that piece of cover unless if you tell another command to do otherwise. Um, so yes. That's how yeah, that's how it works. So overall, very, very simple and easy to do. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, and or concerns, you know where to leave them in the comment section below. Um, my Facebook, you know, uh, my email, all that stuff. You know, I'll have all the links and all that stuff in the description down below. Um, yeah, if you have any concerns, like I said, if you if you guys like this video, give a thumbs up because that really helps me a lot. Um, you guys have been supporting me a lot. I have almost have a 1,000 subscribers. So, again, thank you all for supporting my channel. I really, uh, you know, love you guys for that. So, thank you all again. And I uh, hope you guys see, I'll see you guys next time.